Hi everybody and welcome back to our last video number 10 in chapter 18. And when we left off, we were looking at a loss carryback example. To illustrate the accounting procedures for net operating loss carryback, assume that GROW Incorporated has no temporary or permanent differences. GROW experiences the following. So in 2022, they had a $50,000 income, 2023, $100,000 income, 2024, $200,000 income. But in 2025, they had a bad, very bad year and lost a half a million dollars. Differing tax rates apply to those years and the taxes paid are shown as follows. Okay. So now, if we recognize the benefit of the loss carryback in the loss year, here is 2025. You'll remember, let's go back. Here's 2025. We lost $500,000. Now, the income tax expense loss carryback, $65,000. So that reduces our net loss by $435,000. Okay, so you can see that we look back just two years, right? To get that $65,000. Now, if the, a carryback fails to absorb a net operating loss, as it did here in the GROW example, or if the company decides not to carry the loss back, then it can carry forward the loss. To a little illustrate then, we're going to return to the GROW example from the preceding section. In 2025, the company records the tax effect of $200,000 loss carry forward as a deferred tax asset. So of $50,000, represent, representing $200,000 here times 25% tax rate, assuming that the enacted future tax rate is 25%. GROW then records the benefits of the carry back and the carry forward in 2025 as follows. So here's the, cat, here's the journal entry to record the benefit of the loss carry back. Here we're going to deb debit income tax refund receivable of $65,000 and credit income tax expense from the loss carry back of $65,000 credit. Now to recognize the benefit of the loss carry forward, we're going to have a deferred tax asset of $50,000 debit and credit income tax expense loss carry forward for $50,000 as shown here. Okay. Now, recognizing the benefit of a loss carry back and carry forward in the loss year. Now we move forward to 2025. Here, we're going to take a look at operating loss before income taxes, $500,000. And we have the income tax benefit of the loss carry back of $65,000 and the loss carry forward of $50,000, totaling $115,000 reducing that $500,000 loss to $385,000 loss. <laughs> okay, now we'll look at comparing the accounting for income taxes under GAAP and IFRS. Here, if we look at similarities, uh, GAAP is similar, uh, uh, I should say IFRS is similar to GAAP, in that it uses asset and liability approach for recording deferred taxes. It's also similar that the classification of deferred taxes under both IFRS and GAAP is always non-current. But there are some differences. 
under IFRS, number one, an affirmative judgment approach is used by which a deferred tax asset is recognized up to the amount that is probable to be re realized. GAAP uses an impairment approach. In this approach, the deferred tax asset is recognized in full. It is then reduced by a valuation account if it is more likely than not that all or a portion of the deferred tax act asset will not be realized. Number two, IFRS uses the enacted tax rate or substantially enacted tax rate, and that means virtually certain. <laughs> For GAAP, the enacted tax rate must be used. Number three, the tax effects related to certain items are reported in equity under IFRS. That is not the case under GAAP, which charges or credits the tax effects to income. And number four, GAAP requires companies to assess the likelihood of uncertain tax positions being sustainable upon audit. Potential liabilities must be accrued and disclosed if the position is more likely than not to be disallowed. Under IFRS, all potential liabilities must be recognized. With, the respect, with respect to measurement, IFRS uses an expected value approach to measure the tax liability, which differs from GAAP. Okay, that ends chapter 18. And when we return, we will take a look at chapter 19. Until that time, bye for now.